Welcome, my name's Tom Mars from St Thomas's King's College London, and I'm here today to present with Jens Walter our debate article, Is Fecal Microbiota Transplantation a Safe and Effective Treatment Option for Gut Dysbiosis, published in Allergy. A range of immune disorders, including allergic diseases, are associated with disordered gut commensal microbiota communities, termed dysbiosis. Fecal microbiota transplantation is the transfer of stool from a healthy donor into the gut of a patient to treat their disease. It's actually common in the natural world with a range of mammals from rabbits to koalas routinely doing this. It's been adopted into international scientific guidelines for the treatment of refractory Clostridium difficile associated diarrhoea. From the point of allergic disease, it's known that human gut microbiota can induce T regulatory cell populations at the level of the colonic mucosa, and murine asthma models have shown that toddler stool can actually prevent the development of allergic airways disease. My name is Jens Walter from University College Cork and the APC Microbiome Island. As Tom pointed out, there are good arguments for the use of FMT in immune mediated diseases. However, there are also arguments against it. For example, in contrast to C. diff infections, it is unclear if and when microbiome dysbiosis may causal contributions to chronic diseases. That questions the rationale for FMTs and exact dosing regimes. Even if causal to disease, it is unclear to what degree dysbiosis can be corrected. Our ecological understanding for how microbiomes respond to FMTs is vastly incomplete making their application a trial and error exercise. Furthermore, it may be detrimental to expose patients that display pathologic immune responses to thousands of foreign microbial strains. And finally, there are safety concerns regarding the exposure to infection and the predisposition to chronic diseases. In our article, we present arguments for and against FMT in immune mediated pathologies and further discuss research gaps and recommendations for future research.